Uh, thanks very much for the invitation. Uh, yes, I'm going to talk about more designs. Uh, so I'll start with a historical introduction to, uh, uh, to the subject. So it, uh, it starts from a, a, a popular question in the 19th century asked by Reverend Kirkman, so Kirkman's uh, schoolgirl problem. Uh, so there are uh, 15 girls uh, who walk in five rows of three um, every day for seven days. Um, and you want to arrange them so that every pair are, are in the same row exactly once. Okay, so, uh, uh, so this was uh, solved soon not. I think Kirkman had a solution himself. Uh, so to, just to illustrate this, I'll simplify it by uh, changing using smaller numbers. So let's let's simplify it to uh, so nine girls in uh, three rows of three. Uh, so then I'll be looking to, uh, to have four days. So I can e easily draw a picture of the solution in, in that case. So let me say that the uh, in the on the first day. Uh, they, I have rows like this, and then on the second day, uh, I'll draw the rows. So I'll, I'll draw them horizontally first, and then, then vertically. So the, uh, the the positions of the of the girls are represented by the dots. These are fixed. So I've covered all pairs, horizontal pairs, then all, then all vertical pairs, then. I'll just, now I'm gonna, I have some diagonal pairs to cover, so uh, I'll do uh, that, and then on day four I'll go in the other direction. Okay, you, you see that's a solution to the to the problem, and this is a what what I've drawn here is a familiar geometric object, the affine plane of order three. And I've uh, exhibited a decomposition of it into parallel classes, so lines which are uh, every set of which just cover every point exactly once. Okay. Um, so, so perhaps a, a more basic version of this question is just to uh, uh, decompose a set of points into triples so that every pair is covered once without thinking about this extra condition that, that they're decomposed into these parallel classes or perfect matchings in the terminology of, of uh, hypergraphs. Uh, so this is a, um, uh, an object called a Steiner triple system. Named after Steiner for some reason, but uh, although Kirkman was actually the one who discovered it and, and, and solved the problem I'm about to, to discuss there. Uh, so, uh, so I want to have, uh, so that, let's say this is um, of order n. Uh, so I have a set x of size n, um, and a set t of triples. On X such that every pair in X is in exactly one triple of two. Okay, so an example of this could be another familiar geometrical object, the Fano plane, projective plane of order two. So there I have a, a set of, of size seven, and then the triples are represented by the lines and the, and the circle, and every pair is in exactly one uh, triple. 
Okay, so um, for which n do these exist? STS, and the Steiner triple system of order n. Uh, so there are some divisibility conditions. Uh, so I need uh, 3 to divide n choose 2. Uh, right, there are n choose 2 pairs. Every triple covers 3 of them. So that's a, a necessary condition. Uh, I need 2 to divide n minus 1. Right, if I if I fix some point of my set and look at uh, all of the pairs containing that set, then uh, every time I choose a triple containing that point, it's going to contain uh, two pairs on that point. So, the, so that two has to divide the total number of pairs on that point, which is n minus one. Okay, so uh, I can rephrase these as saying I need n congruent to uh, one or three mod six. Uh, and Kirkman showed that this is uh, also a sufficient condition. So if n is congruent to 1 or 3 mod 6, then there is a Steiner triple system in quadrant. Okay, so, um, right, so that's a, I said that's a more basic question. What's the answer to the... Uh, uh, the uh, original question. So, uh, uh, um, so, so when is there? Uh, let me say a KTS, a Kirkman triple system. So now I want to impose uh, the, I have n vertices and so I, I, I discussed the examples n equals 13 and 9 above. So in general I have n, I want to uh, uh, decompose a set of triples so that every pair is in exactly one of them. And I also want to be able to decompose these triples into perfect matchings. So uh, uh, subsets of the triples where every vertex is in exactly one of those. So then we have the extra condition. Uh, that n is divisible by 3, obviously, if there's, for there to be any perfect matching. Um, and so this rules out the possibility that n is congruent to 1 mod 6. Um, so we need uh, n is congruent to 3 mod 6. Uh, so the, uh, uh, and this is sufficient, but this was proved much later. So this was proved by uh, Lou in the 60s and independently by Ray Choudhury and, and Wilson in the 70s. Uh, so, if n is congruent to 3 mod 6, then there is a Kirkman triple system. Uh, so, the, the big gap between the, these publication years is explained by the fact that Liu was working in China and there was no information coming out, and so his, his work was not known until much later. Okay, so, all right, now, this is, uh, let me discuss various ways to generalize this um, historical context. Uh, so I can think of uh, a Steiner triple system as a triangle decomposition of a complete graph. Whenever you have a triple, you just think of the, the triangle, which is represented by the, uh, the edges of that graph. And then the condition that every pair is in exactly one triple just translates directly to saying that every edge is in exactly one triangle. So partition edge set into triangles. Okay, um, so then this, with this perspective, you, you have the, it suggests the question, when does a graph have a triangle decomposition? Okay. 
Uh, so there are necessary conditions, just um, of the same type that I've already discussed. So I need uh, the number of edges to be divisible by three, uh, because every triangle has three edges. And all degrees are e even. Right. Uh, so the, again, so I'm thinking of the, all of the edges at some vertex in the graph. Every triangle at that vertex is going to cover two of them, so I, that must be even. Um, so I'll say, if these conditions hold, then I'll say that G is uh, tridivisible. So uh, tridivisibility is a necessary condition. Uh, but it's not sufficient. So a simple example, if I think about a six cycle. So uh, it has six edges. All degrees are two even, but there's no triangle. So uh, uh, we need other conditions on, on a graph to guarantee that it has a triangle decomposition. Kirkman's result, I just state, uh, stated on the existence of a Steiner triple system, can be rephrased as saying that if it, whenever you have a complete graph, if, if it's tridivisible, then it's, uh, it has a triangle decomposition. Um, so uh, a few years ago, I, I extended that to the setting of uh, typical graphs. Uh, so, uh, uh, so a pseudorandomness, let me say, uh, typicality. Uh, so I'll say uh, G is uh, C typical if um, so all degrees are close to what they would be if you had a random graph. So one plus or minus C times the uh, the density of the graph times n. And, and all uh, co-degrees, so intersections of neighborhoods, are what you would expect if it was random. So the density squared times m, so uh, up to a sum, some error of c. So this is a familiar quasar randomness condition that appears in many contexts. Um, and so I, sh I showed that un under this kind of assumption, a dense uh, tridivisible graph has a, a triangle decomposition. Uh, yeah, so. Uh, I'm fixing two vertices uh, U and V, and then I'm looking at all of the vertices which are adjacent, vertices W which are adjacent to U and to V. Now, if I had a random graph, then any particular vertex would satisfy that with probability uh, equal to the density squared. So that's this is a saying that uh, just when look if I look at a pair of vertices, then they they behave roughly like they would if the graph was random. Um, so yeah, this, this kind of property, it, it's, it, if, if you haven't seen this before, it doesn't look like a very strong condition, but actually this co-degree condition Im implies many other things. It implies that you can, you, for any fixed graph, you, you know roughly how many copies of that graph there are. So it is quite a strong quasi-randomness condition. So the... Uh, uh, I do want to be able to cover every edge, so it's 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 different to a sort of a, having a global count. I really want a local con condition. That, um, I mean, possibly you could allow some edges to be 
to be weaker and actually a real state of version. In fact, no, I don't need it that's, to be that strong. I'm going to state a stronger version um, later, which, which has a weaker as assumption. But, yeah. but I do need to know something about every edge. Right? Um, okay. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, something that I'm 2015. Um, so uh, uh, so there, are, there are some constants, C0 and N0, so that for all N begin N0, uh, any uh, tri-divisible uh, C-typical graph G on N bigger than N0 vertices with, um, I'm going to, so I said I wanted to be dense, and I'm, the density which I require can actually decay polynomially with N. So I'll say density bigger than um, N to the minus 10 to the minus 7. So that's not, just to be concrete, the, the, the value is not important. Um, and C less than the, the C0 times density to the 10 to the 6 um, has a triangle decomposition. Okay. Um, so, so this, uh, this theorem has a, um, a couple of um, applications. So one is it tells you that if you take a random graph, then you can um, almost completely cover it with uh, with triangles. So there are some obstructions based on the fact that the uh, number of edges may not be divisible by three, but the, or, and that about, typically about half the vertices will have even degree, half will have odd degree. So this tells you that you can't do everything. But subject to that, you can, you can get the optimal possible um, number of uncovered edges. Um, it also um, implies a solution to a conjecture of Wilson on the number of Steiner triple systems. So it implies... Uh, Wilson's conjecture uh, that the uh, so the number of Steiner triple systems of order n has an approximate formula uh, n over e squared plus little o n to the n squared over six if if n is congruent to one or three mod six. Um, so the the formula is not Im important. So this is. Um, uh, there is there's something which comes out from um, there's a there's a natural upper bound on this number which comes from entropy considerations and this is what it is and then the co this this implies a, the lower bound which matches this formula the reason being that you can uh, you can run a, a a random greedy process where in each step you take a random triangle uh, that ha that's disjoint from those you've chosen so far and you can run this until you've covered almost all the edges in fact that's this that's why I'm asking for a, something which is a bit better than uh, little o one here. I want some some uh, decent decay in n, and then well, I, this this theorem will say well, whatever graph is left, um, you you can analyze the random process and show that it satisfies uh, the typicality condition. And so there is some way to uh, complete the triangle decomposition and make a Steiner system, and then uh, the count just from what's happening in the random greedy process matches this bound up to this this error term. Uh, okay, so this is all about uh, graphs. Now I want to generalize the hypergraphs. So the, uh, uh, so the general form of the question is, so I'm looking at the, uh, uh, well, this is not the most general form, but let me start with this. So uh, KRQ, so the complete R graph 
on Q vertices. So the edges have size R. So in this notation, the triangle is K23. Um, um, and then I'm going to have a, um, an R multigraph G on N vertices. So, uh, so if it was an R graph, then I'd just be taking edges. But I, I also want to think about having some multiplicities on the edges. Um, so when, when does G have a KRQ decomposition? So some particular cases that will be of interest are if, if G is also a complete R graph. Complete R graph. And then, then this object is called a, a, a Steiner NQR system. So it's a set. Another way to say it is you take a, a set of Q tuples in such a way that you cover every R tuple exactly once. And then I might want to generalize that by, by taking multiplicities. G is lambda KRN. So every edge is taken with some constant multiplicity lambda. And then this is called a design with parameters N, Q, R, and lambda. Uh, OK, so there are some uh, divisibility conditions which arise in the same way as these ones that I'm about to erase for the uh, Steiner system. So for any uh, subset of the vertex set, um, so I need uh, the degree, uh, I write it as GE, so, uh, so the number of edges. Uh, divisible by uh, the number of edges in a in a clique containing a set of that size. Right, if I, whenever I choose a, a, a KRQ containing that set, that's how many edges it's going to, it's going to con contain. So that's the divisibility condition. So I'll say that. I'll say that G is uh, KRQ divisible. Um, so, uh, uh, right, so then, uh, uh, similarly to the triangle question, you, then you say, okay, that's a necessary condition. Um, it, it may not be sufficient in general. Uh, maybe it's sufficient for. Uh, for complete hypergraphs or for uh, complete multigraphs, or maybe more generally, um, it's true for uh, under some typicality condition. Um, so this is, so I, I proved this in 2014. So, um, so if uh, G is, uh, let's say, uh, I'll state this informally, if dense, uh, uh, typical, and KRQ divisible, then G has a, a KRQ decomposition. Okay, so I haven't I haven't defined the, the typicality condition, but there is a definition which is analogous to the one which I uh, uh, stated earlier for for graphs. Uh, so in particular, this uh, implied the existence of uh, of designs with with uh, uh, 
general parameter sets if the number of vertices is large compared with the, the, parameter, the other parameters, Q, R, and lambda. So I've missed out a lot, a lot of history of this problem, and I'll tell you some of it because it's, it's, uh, it's, it's relevant to the proof and also to uh, some, some generalizations. Um, so I've mentioned the Kirkman's uh, uh, result on standard triple systems. So uh, the next significant work was by Hanani in the 60s, solving some other cases for graphs. And, and then the, the big breakthrough was by Wilson in the 70s, who solved the, the, ca the case. Um, uh, so the uh, so N Q two lambda designs, um, and this was uh, uh, by explicit algebraic constructions. Um, so next, uh, but one thing too that I want to mention about this is the uh, uh, the characterization of the um, the integral relaxation of the problem. So the so I want to as, um, as, assign uh, integer weights. Um, WQ to copies Q of KRQ such that uh, for every edge E, the sum of the, of the cliques containing that edge of the weights is equal to uh, the number of copies of that edge. Uh, so the, uh, the decomposition problem is uh, is obtained by changing integer to uh, if I make that zero one, then that's that's the same thing as a decomposition. Okay, so if there is a, a zero one solution, then in particular it's an integral solution. It makes sense to consider the the integral relaxation as, as a first step to the to understanding the uh, the zero one problem. And and what Wilson showed and also shown independently by Grafer and Jerkat, is that the divisibility conditions suffice for an integer solution. Um, again, in the context of complete complete graphs. So, uh, uh, so the, the, uh, the next significant progress was by Rodel, who introduced the, uh, the semi-random method for this problem. So, variously known as the nibble or semi random method. And I've already alluded to this earlier this, the idea of, of making some random choices subject to not conflicting with what was previously chosen. And so, um, this method gives a, an almost construction of design. So, um, there exists. Uh, and uh, let me say, there exists edge disjoint KRQs in KRN covering all but little o n to the r edges. So uh, an almost Steiner system.
So this, um, this is a significant breakthrough, and it su suggests an idea for a, um, for a general strategy for obtaining an exact solution, which is to, to take uh, the approximate solution and find some way of, 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 uh, of covering the remainder, so some absorption method. Yes? This, what's the question, sir? Um, yeah, so this, um, uh, as I've stated, it, this, this result here applies to, uh, to, the, to the clique, but actually it can be generalized quite easily to, it, to any uh, R graph which satisfies the, uh, well, in fact, maybe I'll say something about that now. So, um, let me just finish, let me just write about that. So, so it suggests the idea of uh, absorbing Uh, remainder to get a, a design standard system. Uh, and indeed, that's the, uh, the rough idea of, uh, uh, of my proof and, and, and also of a more recent proof by uh, Glock, Kuhn, Lorenosovus. So. have different ways of, of implementing that, that idea. So mine is, a, a, is an idea which mixes uh, randomness and algebra, and there's a, a more combinatorial way of, of doing this. So the uh, um, so this uh, semi-random method of Rodel is important in, in many other contexts. It's been applied countless times in, in the combinatorial literature since he introduced this in the 80s. Uh, and there are so a, an important uh, gem, more general form of it is uh, a result of uh, Pippinger and Spencer. So um, so let me. Uh, let me give you another way of thinking about a Steiner system. So a Steiner system, uh, um, so I can think of it as a perfect matching in an auxiliary hypergraph. So for example, a Steiner triple system um, is the same thing as a perfect matching uh, in an auxiliary three graph uh, H where the uh, the vertex set are all pairs. Uh, and the edge set are all pairs which are contained in triples. Okay, so, so another way of thinking about it, I've converted, I have another reformulation. I'm having a, a hypergraph where the vertices now represent pairs of vertices in my original world, and the edges are f collections of pairs which correspond to the ones which you would take in a triple. So in this context, I'm asking for a perfect matching. So just a collection of edges so that I cover every new vertex, which is an old pair, exactly once. Right. Um, and the reason for doing this is, is there's, um, it's, um, it suggests, um, well, so it, encodes many things as a perfect matching problem in, in hypergraphs. And there's a, uh, it suggests that, well, okay, so what, I'm getting ahead of myself. So let me state the uh, Pippinger-Spencer theorem uh, roughly. So, um, so if I have a, um, um, so if, uh, so an, an R, if I have an R graph, any, R graph H with uh, all degrees, uh, say one plus little o one D for some D, and all uh, uh, so all, let me say all vertex degrees 
and all pair degrees, little od has an almost perfect matching. Okay, so let me let me illustrate this the assumptions of this for this particular hypergraph. So um, here, if I take if I take a, a vertex which uh, uh, represents a pair, and I ask how many edges does that belong to, I have to choose. I've, I have A and B. I have to choose C, which I can do in about n ways. So um, this is actually I can do it in n minus two ways. So this is regular with degree n minus two. If I take a pair of vertices, then um, where if it's A, B, and C, D, then they're not in any edges. If it's A, B, and, and A, C, then that determines unique edge. So the, the pair degrees are one, which is much smaller than n. So this theorem applies with much room to spare to say that this auxiliary graph has an almost perfect matching, which can be interpreted as an almost perfect uh, Steiner triple system. And I'm just talking about Steiner triple systems for an illustration, but this clearly applies to uh, clique decompositions in general. Um, and uh, and Kahn uh, later showed that this is true with weights as well. So, uh, so you can imagine you have a, a weighted uh, weights on the edges, and uh, you define degrees and, and pair degrees in the appropriate way, and this is this is still true. Um, so the, the reason I'm telling you this is it's, um, it's, uh, it's exhibiting another way of thinking about the obstructions to decomposition. So I, I talked about the, uh, uh, the integral relaxation and divisibility obstructions. Um, this, when I go to this form, you can think of a fractional relaxation of the problem. So I'm, I'm thinking about, uh, I think I, the, uh, I've, I've, uh, I don't see my description of the integral relaxation on the board, but it, there, there's some uh, weighted form, and I said, suppose the weights are integers. Um, you could also suppose that the weights are, are any real, or let's say, rational, uh, uh, non-negative numbers. Um, and that's another relaxation. And roughly speaking, um, uh, so that it's not exactly that, because I want some other conditions on these, these pair degrees, but you can think of that as a... Uh, You can think of it just as the fractional relaxation. So then uh, um, a more general result that I've uh, shown recently is that, uh, uh, so, um, so under uh, certain extendability conditions, Uh, any obstruction uh, to decomposition appears in the integral or fractional relaxation. Okay, so this is this is very vaguely worded, but it's sort of the, the spirit of, of, of several theorems which can be uh, stated more precisely. Um, what, what kind of thing is an extendability condition? This goes back to the question about, well, do I, need, do I really need uh, a, a local typicality condition? So the answer is no. I just want to know that it, locally I can find many copies of, of any particular configuration I like. I don't really care exactly how many, as long as there are enough of them that I can... Uh, Basically, so I can implement some strategy of, of making local, local modifications. So the, uh, um, the, the only role of typicality in general is to say that I can so solve the, the fractional relaxation. I can find a, a uniform weighting of the, the objects that I'm making the decomposition with so they, that they cover almost everything. And then, uh, and then the role, so that's, that, I mean, that's by, by this theorem or by Kahn's theorem, that already gives you an approximate decomposition. And then the role of the extendability and the integral, uh, the lack of integral uh, obstructions is to uh, uh, go from an approximate decomposition to exact. Okay. Um, let me s s 
conclude by say, stating some new results. Um, so the first is, is a generalization of uh, uh, Kirkman's problem to, to general design, so the existence of resolvable designs. So uh, um, if um, n is bigger than uh, uh, n0 qr lambda, uh, uh, q divides n, and Q minus I divide, choose R minus I divides lambda M minus I choose R minus I for I between zero and R minus one. Then there is the resolvable NQR lambda design. So this is so this is this here is the is the necessary condition for the existence of design. This is this extra condition that Q divides n is, is the condition for the existence of the perfect matching. And then under these conditions, for large m, you can find a design which is decomposed into perfect matchings. Um, Um, so the, the, this uh, suggests a more general problem of uh, uh, so uh, decomposing designs into perfect matchings is an example of, of, of many other kinds of questions you could ask about decomposing one design into another. Uh, so an, another result of this type is, is, a, is an object known as, uh, as a large set of designs, decomposing a complete hypergraph into designs. Um, so uh, if uh, n is bigger than m0 q of r, uh, uh, lambda divides uh, m minus r, choose q minus r, and uh, q minus i, r minus i. then uh, the complete Q graph on N vertices can be decomposed into N, Q, R, lambda designs. Uh, so this was, uh, this was known for decomposing complete graphs into standard triple systems, but in, in general, this was not known. Um, notice that I'm not assuming that any bound on lambda. This is, um, can, can actually be done for, for arbitrarily large lambda. I'm just supposing that n is large compared with Q and R. Um, Short on time, so I, I don't. I, I'll, I'll say just. I'll just say more generally that there are and and more results on decomposing designs into designs. For example, you can take the the. Com complete graph KQN and decompose it into NQ, Q minus one systems, each of which is decomposed into NQ, Q minus two systems, all the way down to NQ one systems, which are perfect matchings and other results and 
of that side. Uh, um, there are also, also versions for uh, um, where you ha have colors on the edges, uh, which are useful in some applications. You can imagine that every edge has a color, and you're decomposing by colored hypergraphs, and you, you're only allowed to use decompositions where colors are respected. Um, and also, I've only been talking about cliques, but um, everything works for general decom decomposition by general hypergraphs. So it's, uh, uh, you need to define the appropriate divisibility conditions. Uh, so and colors. And uh, H decomposition for uh, any R graph H. Uh, I should mention that this H decomposition problem was also uh, solved recently by, by Glock, Kuhn, Lowe, and Osphus. Um, I wanted to say a bit about uh, why, um, why these, uh, these more general results are not, why, why they're more difficult than uh, the existence of, de of designs, why it's not just applying the, s the same method in a, in a more general context. Um, so the answer is a lot of it is the same. So this is the broad strategy of finding an approximate decomposition and then absorbing what's left over. Um, and so the, the, the real difficulty comes in understanding the integral relaxation. Um, so, the, so in general, the main extra difficulty is in uh, the integral relaxation. Um, so uh, in the examples I've mentioned, so in clique decompositions, there's this simple description, which I keep, which I mentioned several times about just looking at the, the degrees of, of various sets. and. And the same is true for, for any hypergraph. It's just the, uh, because the degrees vary, that there's a more complicated condition, which is based, based on looking at the, the greatest common divisor of the various degrees of various sizes. Um, let me just conclude with, with an example to illustrate why, as you might, why there isn't such a, a uh, characterization for, for general problems of Bit of, uh, well, I haven't said what the general kind of problem is, but it's, uh, I'll show you an example and maybe <coughs> illustrate something. So, so my example is is going to have colours. Uh, so I'm going to have a uh, a rainbow copy of K4, complete graph in four vertices. And I want to look at uh, the lattice generated lattice uh, in uh, Z to the uh, uh, Z indexed by triangles, which is generated by uh, so it's on rainbow triangles, which is generated by just taking all copies of this. So I have some some coloring of a complete graph. I consider all copies of this, and I want to look at the the lattice generated by rainbow triangles. Um, now, you might guess that you have degree conditions of the kind, maybe I'll, I'll draw, I could draw a, a picture. So uh, I'm just going to focus on this, this triangle here, blue, yellow, and, and white. So I've drawn, I've drawn an octahedron here, a complete three-part graph with two vertices in each part. And I've drawn it in such a way that all of the triangles are rainbow, but I've twisted it in such a way that, so I've got all blue here. Here I've got yellow going here and white here, and here I've got white going here and yellow going here. So all of the triangles are rainbow. And I can assign plus or minus one weights to these triangles in such a way that the, uh, the weight on any edge is zero. 
And so that means that any, any div divisibility condition which you want to put based on counting the number of triangles on an edge or on a vertex is going to be satisfying because it just sums to zero. Um, but you can show that this, this vector um, here is not expressible as an integer combination of these vectors here. So what it's telling you is it ma the order matters. The fact that I've switched the order in which yellow and white connects to these vertices affects whether you're in the lattice or not. And so that just makes the whole characterization much more complicated. It turns out that for these kinds of questions, the fundamental object is not a hypergraph, which is a set of sets, but a set of functions. So in, in that kind of context, you can define the correct lattice and, and the generalization uh, goes through in that, in that context. So that's it. Uh, I'll stop there.